What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Um, it's been a little bit of time since the last time we posted a video. I took a vacation uh, for a couple of weeks. Um, I had some family come and visit here in Colorado. It was a good time, um, but I am back at it. We have another track day coming up in a couple of weeks here, a Memorial Day weekend, and there's a couple things I want to do on the car before then. Um, one of the biggest things that I was having trouble with was pushing coolant temps and overall temps um, while on the track. Um, today's actually a very cold day. We had a random snowstorm come in, um, but next time I'm on track, it should be you know back up to 80, maybe 90 degrees air temp. Um, so I wanted to get some mods on the car um, to help with those cooling things. Um, one specific thing that I'm having issues with is the under the hood temps. Um, I think my cooling system itself, I could, I'm gonna burp it again, that'll help. But um, overall, I think that the overall issues are stemming from the fact that I have an open hood scoop and I have a front mount intercooler, which essentially produces a high pressure zone underneath the hood. And there's not really an easy way for that air to be extracted. And that's where this new, these new parts come in. All right. So these, these are the APR uh, universal narrow hood louvers, hood vents, whatever you want to call them. I'm going to be installing them on my hood today. Um, I am a little intimidated because I'm going to be taking an angle grinder to my hood. Um, this is probably one of the most, you know, probably the scariest thing kind of mod that I've done before because this is where, you know, if I make a mistake, my hood is trashed and I'm gonna have to buy a new one. So we're gonna be very careful, we're gonna take it slow. Um, you guys will notice I have a, what's it called? A template here in cardboard and it'll slide into both because they're both mirrored. Um, I do have to trim it a bit more to make them line up perfectly. But the outside of this piece of cardboard is pretty much exactly where the end edges of the uh, the actual vents are gonna be going. So I'm gonna be taping up the hood once I have it off the car. And we're gonna be lining using this template up. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Where, exactly where we want it on the car. And then we'll figure it out from there. But um, that's pretty much what we're gonna be doing today. Um, I have another cooling mod that I'm gonna tell you guys about right now. So the other thing that I wanted to do today, and it's a kind of a DIY mod, it's not really installing anything, it's actually removing some things. Um, these vents here, um, there's a channel that goes behind these vents up through the body underneath the uh, quarter panel here, or the fenders, um, into the cavity within the, within the, under the hood. So there's a cavity under the hood here that comes all the way down. And this is all empty space, which means that these vents could be functional if we remove the plastic behind them. So um, I'm gonna be going through, popping these off later, um, drilling a hole or removing the, uh, the plastic lining behind these vents uh, with a Dremel. Um, and that should actually help as well with evacuating and pushing some of the air from under the hood out these vents. Um, traditionally, these are used to help with pulling air out of the, um, the fender. Um, we'll see, I might end up adding some mesh like in here on the tire or on the fender well um, to help push and pull air out through this. Um, but I think for now, I'm just gonna be focusing on reducing those under hood pressures. And I think this will be a small mod that might actually help as well. So that's enough of me talking. Let's uh, dive right into it and get the hood off. So to remove the hood, um, we have a couple things we have to do. First, we're gonna be popping off these struts. Um, but first, what I'm gonna be doing, just to make things simpler, is I'm gonna break these 12 millimeter bolts loose right here and here. So there's two on each side. So I'm gonna break those loose, uh, not take them off quite yet, and then we'll worry about the struts after. So we got the hood 
taken off. Um, I'm just gonna be removing all this plastic tr uh, trim underneath. Should be pretty simple. I think, I have no clue. So I think I have it exactly where I want it. Uh, I'm just gonna go through with Sharpie here and just draw exactly where that outline is. Uh, I, I'm not gonna lie, I am, I am pretty terrified here. Uh, this is a big thing, but I think I approached it the right way. We got the right tool. This is a Milwaukee four and a half inch angle grinder with a metal cutoff wheel which would be perfect, I gotta tighten down. I got my gloves, and most importantly, I got my glasses on, safety glasses, because cutting metal, you do not want shirts flying into your eye. So I guess the only thing we have to do is just send it. So, whew. let's just go for it. Wow, this actually cuts right through that, like, Butter. That was that's actually really nice. So it just needs to be a hair wider on each side, which is what I wanted because I don't wanna have to overcut and then have the, the entire thing ruined. This is exactly what we want, guys. So. I think I'm gonna take a bit off of the outside. So that inner cut actually looks really good. So. So I'm really happy with how this came out. Um, I think slow and steady is really the method you want to use. You do not want to overcut in any direction because you'll mark up the hood and it won't be covered. I don't care how ugly it looks because it's all going to be covered anyway. So 
very, very happy with this house, how this side turned out. Um, I'm going to turn off the camera just to preserve battery and then work on the other side, um, just kind of following the same method. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk to you guys about really quick is something that I just figured out while I was doing this. Um, I do have a clear coat, a clear bra from the OEM. It's a Subaru clear bra on the front of the car to help protect from rock chips and all that. Um, and I, you see it kind of like burning because it's, you know, it's a rubber plasticky material um, from the saw going through it. But if anything, it actually helped keep the line super clean for some reason, um, but it didn't peel up. It didn't do anything. It didn't bubble. So I'm not too worried about it. So um, if you guys have a clear bra on your car, you can still do this. So that's good. So here's the preliminary fitment. I angled them or I pointed them a little bit farther back. I placed them a little farther back to give more room for air to move backwards out the engine because that's really the direction that we're going to be going. But they look so good right in this line with the natural body line of the hood here. Same on this side. Oh yeah. They look really, really good. So what I'm going to do now is just uh, take the hose and pressure wash as much of the metal shavings and dust and grime off of the hood without these attached, get the hood as cleaned up as possible, and then we're going to mount these. Probably an hour or two later, um, a lot of the stuff that I was doing was really just arduous and difficult. Um, so I didn't really want to put you guys through just staring at me, struggling to get these bolts in, but um, I will say getting these bolts in was terribly, terribly awkward. Um, I had to put a piece of tape on the bottom of a, um, a spanner wrench, like on the 16 point circle, put a piece of tape and then lay the nut on the inside and then squeeze my hand in the gap between the two panels on the back side of this to get to some of these bolt locations. But they all went in just fine and I am so proud of this product. Um, this install is not for the faint of heart. Um, I'm gonna tell you guys some overall tips and tricks at the end here, but uh, for now, it is looking great. Bolts are in, everything's cleaned up. It's still pretty dusty, but I'm gonna give the car a good wash tomorrow. Um, so let's get this back installed onto the car and see how it looks. So here is the finished product. So I think that these look absolutely amazing. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that, the, uh, the, is that these are universal, so they're not exactly fitted to be exact, like uh, to the WRX hood. Um, I placed mine a bit farther back than some people do, but um, I think overall they still look great. And the fitment is actually still pretty decent because they do have a natural curl curve to them uh, from the back to the front, um, which is great. But, um, one thing to note, guys, is that these are wet carbon fiber. They're not dry carbon, which means that they will flex a little bit as they go through heat cycles. So hopefully, um, as these get warmed up by the sun and the car running and things like that, um, they will mold to the shape of the hood a tiny bit more. That being said, I mean, there really aren't really many gaps at all, which is nice. There's one little, little one in the front here, but again, uh, I'm just going to check the bolts again after these have curved, uh, gone through some heat cycles and maybe formed a bit more. Um, so I'm going to go back, check the bolts uh, probably in a week from now. But overall, I am so incredibly happy with how these came out. Um, like I said, very scary install, but I took my time with it. it took about three, four hours and they look amazing. So it is day two. We're going to be tackling the um, fender vents now. Um, pretty simple. I'm just going to be removing this mud flap temporarily. Um, I'm clipping the bottom panel here, um, the rocker panel, so I can just pull that off and then we can pop this piece off all at once and access that, that part right there. So. Thank you. 
we're basically just gonna be cutting out these squares here, guys. Uh, pretty simple. We just wanna make sure we don't go too deep to hit the uh, plastic on the other side. So that looks really good, guys. Uh, I'm just gonna clean this up and then we'll go over to actually drilling out the, uh, the holes in the side panel, the body of the car. So we actually can actually get some, uh, you know, airflow through there. So these vents are now 100% functional. I just need to button up the uh, rocker panel here and add the, uh, the clips back in, but this is all set to go. Um, it's gonna be hard to see, essentially. Let me see if I can get some light in there so you guys can see. Yeah, you can kind of see the light back there. But those are open now and actually functional. So, cool. All right, guys, she's looking so good. We got the APR carbon fiber vents, and we did the functional fender vents. Um, so hopefully these will help. Um, I'll definitely let you guys know what kind of temps I see when I'm on the track. I do track my, um, you know, coolant oil, of course, those temperatures, but also my IATs, my uh, intake temperatures. Um, I do the manifold one because um, that's pretty much the most important one. That's the temperature after. The, it goes through the intercooler. So really excited for this next track day, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Sorry I uh, didn't explain and show as much of the process on these two installs. I've just been really focused, really busy, and I wanted to get through these a little quickly. So um, if you guys haven't, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. It really helps us out. Um, we have that track video coming out next week-ish. Yeah, probably next Monday is when I'm going to be dropping it. So um, can't wait for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next week. Peace.